What is glyphosate and does it matter to your health? Well, I'm Annette Reeder, the Biblical Nutritionist, and I'm going to answer these questions today and it may surprise you. In fact, I want you to have your grocery list ready because I'm about to shock your world. I, as I said, I'm Annette Reeder, the Biblical Nutritionist, and it is my pleasure and blessing to serve you God's recipe for excellent health. As you know, I teach in the Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study. Well, wait a minute. You may not be aware of that. You may be new to this channel. And I just want to say, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Be sure and hit the subscribe button down below so you get notified every time we post a video. And we post videos three to four times a week because it's my honor and my blessing to be your nutritionist, your biblical nutritionist, and help you understand how your body works, how to buy healthy foods, and just how to um, have an amazing life. So I teach in the Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study to follow three principles. And those principles are eat the foods that God called food for us. <laughs> and number two is eat those foods as close to the way he designed. Well, that kind of gets a little questionable when we look at the word glyphosate. Now, like I said, be sure and watch till the end because, and have your grocery list ready because I'm about to shock your world. Let's first of all understand what is glyphosate. So glyphosate is an herbicide, but it's made for two reasons. One, to kill, and number two is to ripen. And that number two, that's what's gonna scare us as we get into this information. You know, I could, you know, glyphosate, it comes as an acid, it comes as salt, and it can be used as a solid, it can be used as a, a liquid. And there are 750 products that contain glyphosate for sale in the United States. That does not count the food products. And this actually is posted by the National Pesticide Information Center. So 750 products for sale in America have glyphosate in them. Now there's gonna be, some of you are like, Annette, glyphosate is very necessary, we understand it, it's, it's great. And there's others of you who are gonna say, ah, not in my diet. And so whatever camp you're in, I realize you're very um, passionate about that. Now glyphosate is a non-selective herbicide, which means if you spray it on something, it's going to die. That's what it's determined to do. It, is, it works on, it stops, it stops a specific enzyme pathway it interrupts protein synthesis, and this is an enzyme pathway that's very necessary for plants and for microorganisms. Very interesting word. And I'm pulling this right off of their website. You can be exposed to it just by your skin, by inhaling it, and by, uh, by your mouth, by getting it in your mouth. And you know, they say fatalities are rare. You know, it's only if you intentionally ingest it. <laughs> Well, when I get to the end of this video, you're gonna say, but I am intentionally ingesting it. So hang in there. Pets, pets are severely at risk for glyphosate. So if you're spraying your yard with a Roundup or a weed killer that has glyphosate and then your pets walk on that yard, that's extremely toxic to them. And it says, well, they may drool, vomit, have diarrhea, lose their appetite or seem sleepy. Well, you know, and that's just with one exposure. What if you have repeated exposures? That's not being studied. What happens when glyphosate enters your body is the website says, well, the majority of the glyphosate will leave, you know, through your urine and your stool without it being changed to another chemical. But the problem with glyphosate is that it's not used alone. They have to use other chemicals with it to make it work. And those other chemicals are as much, if not more toxic, according to their own website. It can kill fish. It can kill wildlife. And... It just has a huge effect. Now, it's a popular herbicide used to kill certain plants and grasses, just as straight from their notes, and helps to manage how plants grow. It gets crops ready for harvest, and it also helps to ripen fruit. Yep, ta-ding, that's one of the bells I want you to listen to. Where is glyphosate used? Well, many farmers use it during food production. Yeah, this is not just when you drive by and you see that, that dead field out there. That you, you know, I have fields all around me. They grow corn and they grow soybeans. Uh, pretty, and then sometimes they'll grow wheat. They, they alternate the three. But you can always tell when they've sprayed the Roundup. It is so, t so I don't know. It just upsets me. <laughs> I'll just say it that way. Okay, so it's often used on fruits and vegetables. It's used on glyphosate-resistant crops like canola, corn, cotton, soybeans, sugar beets, and wheat. 
Now, you may think, oh, Annette, don't worry about it. I get all my vegetables, my not necessarily fruit, but my vegetables from the greenhouse. Well, they use it in the greenhouse, according to their own website. And so we just need to be aware of what it is and what it does. Now, I'm going to list several foods that are coated with, affected by glyphosate. Now I want you to just kind of keep counting. You're gonna run out of fingers, I guarantee you. So just put little tally marks. And then I want you to post that number down below in the comments. How many foods are you eating every week that may be contaminated with glyphosate? This is really what's going to shock your world. All right, let's start with corn. That would be all products made from corn. Soybeans, that's pretty much 70% of the grocery store. And then it's even sprayed on non-GMO crops, which I've already listed, wheat, barley, oats, and beans. They do it so it can dry the crops out. The, the idea is we've got to get the crops to the store so that you buy them as quick as possible. Time is money. And the quicker they can turn crops around, the quicker they can turn you know, animals that are being raised for, for food, the quicker they can grow them and raise them and get them to the grocery store, the faster they can turn around on their money. So glyphosate goes into foods very early in the food chain before the raw food is even harvested and before it's processed. So you're gonna find glyphosate in foods that are oat-based, which include your oatmeal, your cereal, granola bars, snack bars have glyphosate. We're not done, keep your tally going. They even showed that a report from California scientists showed that a 43 out of 45 products that were tested had glyphosate. That included Quaker oats, Quaker old fashioned oats, and Cheerios had above average levels. Now, keep your list going. It also is in grain and bean products like pasta, buckwheat, barley, kidney beans, and chickpeas. And if you watched my hummus video and we use all those chickpeas, yeah, we've got to buy organic chickpeas. Now, here's where the shocker is really going to hit. Now, keep your tally going. Some of the foods that are going to surprise you are going to be avocados, apples, blueberries, cherries, cucumbers, and I'm not even halfway through. Hang in there. Dates, dried peas, garlic, lemons, olives, peanuts. I'm still not done. Pomegranates, potatoes, rice, spinach, sugarcane, tobacco. What are you doing with tobacco anyway? Tomatoes and walnuts. Count up your list and tell me how many of those foods have you eaten in the last week and put your number down below in the comments. <laughs> yeah, this is, um, this is very interesting. Now, organic foods. Are you safe with organic foods? You are safer with organic foods. There is no 100% guarantee in America. But in organic, in organic foods, you're only getting a trace amount versus a high amount. And so it's very important that we start feeding our family organic foods. I get it, it costs more. Learn how to grow your foods. Um, partner with a co-op, partner with someone who has ground. That I mean, I, I have a lot of ground near me. I would love for people to just come and grow your own garden. It's fine with me. And so just realize that there's always gonna be a cross-contamination here in America because of the number of acres that are used to grow these crops that are being sprayed. And so, you know, it's just the long-term health risk, we don't even really know, but I'll, t I'll share with you what we do know about long-term health risk. Number one is cancer. This has got such a debate about it right now in America. We have one couple they use Roundup to spray on all their rental properties. They've been using it you know, for many years. And the husband came down with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in the bones and the wife came down with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in the brain. And so they have sued and won a huge lawsuit, but that's just gonna be contested until they probably aren't even able to spend the money. It's just really sad how the government works and the EPA is kind of on that side. Um, lid, <laughs> um, liver and kidney damage. Um, it can affect the livers and kidneys. The studies of dairy cows eating a diet of soybeans on high levels of glyphosate had higher risk of liver and kidney damage. And then we, we buy those dairy products and feed it to our children. Well, I don't, but some people do. So we need to consider this. Um, reproductive issues, when it was fed to pregnant rats, the babies, the fetuses were born with skeletal defects. You know, it's... 
Remember I said those three principles, eat the foods God called food for you. And number two, eat it as close to the way he designed it. Glyphosate takes us outside of God's design. It's man interfering with our own food. And our food, what we eat, is one of the most intimate acts we do every day. And we want to make sure we control it and not some huge manufacturing company, some huge pharmaceutical company, because Monsanto, which makes glyphosate, is owned by Bayer, which is a pharmaceutical company. You have to ask yourself, why are they all in connection? Anyway, that's another video. I'm a net reader of the biblical nutritionist. I'm so sorry to upset your, your, your um, day, but I just want you to be aware. I want you to be informed, and I want you to always know that God loves you. No matter what, God loves you. And that's what's most important to understand. And your cells will recognize that when you admit that God does love you. And that reader of Biblical Nutrition, be sure and like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave some comments. And don't forget to check out our website, biblicalnutritionist.com. We have a free seven steps to biblical health there. And that's just seven of my key teaching points with all my clients that I put together in a course or in a seven-day email system so that you can get notified and understand how much God loves you and how you can have great health God's way. Thanks for watching. Till next time.